Welcome back, troglodytes, to the Troglies Guitar Show. Today we have a Gibson Les Paul Studio Premium Plus. I've wanted to review one of these for such a long time, and somebody wanted that Sparkle Studio, so we made an even swap, because I figure, hey, both of these will sell for about the same price anyways. So this is a model that was introduced around 2001 as the Studio Plus. And what's different about this as compared to a different studio of the era? Well, you have gold hardware, and if you haven't noticed, a triple A flamed maple top. Obviously, some are nicer than others. This is one of the nicer ones I've seen. But on top of that, they have the exposed maple cap, which makes it look like they have binding. Most of them, depending on which finish you have, will have cream plastics. Some of them will also have black. Stock, they'll have the 490R, 498T pickups, just like the regular studio. And Gibson advertises these as a 59 neck profile. They were initially available in Desert Burst, Trans Red, and Trans Black finishes. However, 2006 comes along, they renamed the Studio Plus to the Studio Premium Plus, and then they added some additional finishes. So they kicked Desert Burst to the curb because apparently nobody liked it, and it is one of the worst selling ones on the used market. But they introduced Beautiful Natural, Root Beer, the same trans red and trans black finishes, and one called Trans Amber, which I featured on a Rock or Not episode because I just loved that guitar. So yeah, they're pretty much just a studio, but with a beautiful flame top. And for some reason, these guitars offend some people because they go, why would you want this guitar? A studio is supposed to be stripped down. It's just bare because you're taking it to the studio to record with it. Shouldn't it be beautiful. But I'm here to argue that no, studios are meant to be an entry level Gibson that just doesn't have all the cosmetic appointments such as binding along the body and the neck. You don't get like a fancy inlay on the headstock, but comparing a studio to like a higher end custom and whatnot, there's not a lot of difference when it comes to tone and playability. Now, obviously there's some and a lot of it comes down to just how the guitar speaks to you. But I love this guitar. It's my first one I've had, but this does not feel like a studio at all. I think it's the gold hardware and the faux binding along here. It really feels more akin to a standard that just doesn't have binding on the neck, which as we all know, I've said many times, I prefer unbound necks, but I prefer the look of bound. So this really is a fantastic guitar, but how much do they cost used? On a really lucky day, you could pick one up for about 800 bucks. But market value, these will usually sell in that thousand to maybe at the highest around 14. There's a lot of people right now on Reverb sitting on these for like 15, 16 for years. It's, eh, I mean, if you have a really nice top, it's mint condition, you might be able to find a buyer at that. But if you've got a thousand to 1200 bucks and you want a really nice playing guitar that is fancy, but doesn't have the binding, these are definitely a great option. I'm really happy to have gotten to try this one out. But one more story before we rip this one apart. Is it a good idea to ship guitars in sub-zero temperatures? No, no it's not. If you haven't heard about all that Arctic weather and whatnot that was hitting my area, I'm up in Ohio. Basically, we had temperatures all the way down to like negative 50 degrees Fahrenheit uh, with wind chill. And that this guitar was kind of shipped during that. And whenever you get a guitar in winter in general, you need to let it sit in the box at least for 12 hours. I usually give them a day or two. And when I opened this one, despite doing all that, we still got finish checking on the neck here. Now, is it too bad? No, it's just a piece of advice. If it's sub-zero temperatures, you don't ship it. But if it's just normal winter temperatures, usually you're okay. So let's go ahead, throw this one on the bench and take a look at its insides. All taken apart, here's what we've got. 
We have Gibson USA humbuckers in here. You can see that the covers were once off of this. So that means these might not be the original pickups. We'll have to take a look on the inside of the control cavity. But the neck pickup reads about 7.5 K ohms and the bridge is at 13.27. So that puts us in the range for the 490R, 498T pickups, which it should have. Inside the neck pickup cavity, you have NA in there for natural. And you can see the mahogany body with the maple top. And the bridge position says LPOP. I'm not sure what the O is for, but the P is for, you know, premium plus or something. So maybe that's supposed to be LPPP. I'm not really sure. The bridge on these are your standard Nashville style. You just have the PW and then these other identifying characteristics. This tailpiece looks like it might be a replacement. It doesn't have the identifying characteristics that I usually see. And judging that this has much more gold on it, I think I'm pretty right in that judgment there. Same story on these knobs. I, I believe they've been replaced, but are very similar to what would have originally been on here. You can see you have some very minor cracks in the shafts, and that's usually when they're installing them. Now they're perfectly secure, but it is good to know about. Should you wish to take the pick guard off, this is what it would look like. You've got really nice flame underneath there, but there are two holes from the installation that you would have to live with and a very light impression from where the bracket rests. Also worth mentioning that the bottom bracket screw is a chrome color, so likely not original. There's also a few micro cracks on the original pickguard here, likely from over tightening in the past. We have a rosewood fretboard on this one. There is some considerable fret wear that we need to take a quick look at, but I just conditioned this board so it's looking good here but you can definitely see some flattening spots on the frets pretty much all the way up until about the 12th fret. So a level crown job would definitely take care of those, but I mean, does it play terribly now? No. It is important to note that the nut has been replaced. It feels nice and flush on this side, but it does stick out just a hair on that side. The nut width is 1.71 inches, and by the 12th fret, 2.1 inches. Neck depth at first fret, 0.84 inches, and by the 12th fret, a 0.98. The truss rod cover reads studio, and once it's off, this is what it looks like. You can see the truss rod has plenty of adjustment room left there. Les Paul model silk screen with gold Gibson silk screen logo. With the back plates off, you can see it's just traditional Gibson wiring. To me, that looks like stock soldering, so they're likely the original pickups. If not, they are the correct style. And here's what the inside of the toggle cavity looks like. The strap buttons have been replaced on this model. They just kind of have a wider end to them so they secure your strap better. One piece mahogany neck and the back of the headstock features gold Cluson Gibson Deluxe tuners with the green keys with the made in USA and traditional serial number. This example weighs 7 pounds 8.6 ounces. Now that we know all about this guitar, let's go ahead and hear how it sounds. <laughs>
Now that we know how this guitar sounds, let's go ahead and review its condition. Face of the headstock here, you do have some scratches. I mean, it's nothing super terrible, but you know, average string change scratches and polishing swirls. As we saw earlier, truss rod works just fine. The nut has been replaced. You have very minimal finish blemishes from that process. Sometimes it can be a lot worse than that. But your fretboard was just cleaned and conditioned. You do have fret wear. Is it a little bit fret buzzy? A little bit. I mean, we'll listen to it amplified here. In my opinion, it's livable with right now, but I mean, just consider a level recrown job in the next year or two and then it'll be perfectly fine because there's tons of life left to these frets. But something to notice is there is a little bit of fret sprout going on. So if you feel right along the frets, there's a little bit of a bump. Now, depending on what humidity your area is in, you might not notice that. The face of the guitar, luckily there's like no finish checking necessarily on the top. There's just one tiny little one and it's like right here. It's just a small line. I'm hoping that's showing up. Cause it goes from there and then it just kind of stems down a little bit right there. But that's the only one that I saw on the top. Besides that, you just have some light nicks and dings. Just as a fun fact about this one, this is the poster child for the reverb price guide. It's this exact guitar. As we talked about earlier, the pickup covers have either been replaced or were taken off at one point in time. The neck pickup has a good amount of gold on it, but you've got some wear along the edges to the bridge pickup, and the bridge itself is very worn there. This is currently set up as a top wrap that makes doing bends a little bit easier, but you can easily change that if you don't prefer that. And again, there are some light cracks in the tops of these knobs. Back of the headstock serial number 02607048, made in USA. You can see you've got a pretty gnarly ding right here. It looks like you might have lost a little bit of wood, but as far as the top of the headstock goes, that's definitely the worst area of wear. Down here, there's no neck breaks or cracks or repairs or anything, but it looks like this dinged up against something or the lacquer just naturally had like a little air pocket in it. You can see it right there. And then there's also a few higher up on the neck. And obviously you have that finish checking that I was talking about, mainly in the middle of the neck. Um, there's a little bit by the nut, but none of this is structural. Honestly, I think it looks kind of cool, but you know, your opinions might vary with finish checking. So when I opened it up, I, I sent a message to the guy. It's like, yeah, we've got finish checking on the neck. Was it there before? I'm not, I'm not worried about it because, you know, at least it wasn't all over the top or in inopportune places like right at the neck break area. It's just natural weather checking there. Back of the instrument, it's definitely been played. You've got some light impressions and buckle swirls. We'll shine the light over it here. So this is just one, if you want a super beautiful guitar that you don't necessarily have to be scared to play. Take a quick look around the edges here. Again, it looks like you have binding, but you know, that's just the maple cap on top. Again, the strap buttons have been replaced. Under black light, we can see we have a nice even glow here on the front. 
Uh, nothing really major to go over. Sometimes during photos, and I don't know if you saw this throughout the video, this spot appears darker. I thought maybe that's because some sweat had absorbed into it. But looking under black light, it doesn't look like that's the case. I think that's just part of the flame grain. Back side of the instrument, you can see some of that sweat absorption I was, I was just talking about right there. But everything else is looking good there. And along the edges, not really seeing any stand rash or anything that we can sometimes see. The neck glows a little bit more, once again, because of the finish absorbing sweat. And the headstock is also looking good here, as does the face. So everything is passing the black light test on this one. Sadly, somewhere along the way, this guitar lost its original case, but you have an aftermarket, kind of cheapy, but not too cheapy of a case. Um, you've got one, two, three, and a fourth back latch on this one. It's kind of a flat top. I mean, it's fairly sturdy. It's not the worst aftermarket case I've seen, but not the best. The inside has a nice dark gray color to it. It's actually got some decent heel support right there and some decent padding there. I was expecting a lot worse. Uh, there is some keys in there, single neck rest, and this kind of acts as your second one. And it's got some decent padding, so a case is a case in this case. As far as the fit goes, up and down, you've got a little bit of motion, but nothing I would really worry about. And left to right, that's pretty snug, so we're all right there. If you think you might be interested in being the next owner of this Gibson Les Paul Studio Premium Plus, and a beautiful natural finish with flame top, feel free to check out that link in the description that will take you to the Reverb for Sale ad. Thank you Troglodytes for watching, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.